Hello, it's me. I'm teaching my telescopes here at Blind Forest Books in Sacramento, Brunswick. And today I'm doing a reading on Saturn going direct in Capricorn. So Saturn goes direct in Capricorn uh, tomorrow morning, October 29th, or September 29th <laughs> at 2.11 in the morning. Uh, and it will stay direct in Capricorn until December 17th when it moves into Aquarius for good. So we had a taste of what um, Saturn and Aquarius will look like earlier in the year. But yeah, we're doing our last leg in Capricorn. This is the last presentation of major challenges surrounding how you're going to be making it up the mountain. Saturn is the planet of challenge. Capricorn is the sign of the sea goat, so the persevering little goat half that, that can climb anything. And then the bottom half is the fishtail. So if you fall off the mountain, you just swim back over and climb right back up. <laughs> Saturn is in its ultimate power in Capricorn. And it also is the sort of epitome of leftover patriarchal energy. So we are actually, at the end of this year, we are shifting right out of that vibe and into the energy of Aquarius. So they, everybody talking about the age of Aquarius, here we come. So anyway, the decks I'm using today <laughs> are the Isis Oracle, the Wisdom of Trees Oracle, uh, Ascended Masters Oracle and Goddess Guidance Oracle as a super deck, and the Toth Tarot. Yay. So let's get right into it with the shadow cards. So we start with White Terra, sensitivity. So the energy you've come through uh, very much involved you realizing what was not working for your energy. What a consistent theme that has been lately. So basically, you're being congratulated for listening to that and really releasing all those patterns that you knew were no longer serving. So those could be addictions, those could be uh, eating patterns, those could be uh, relationships that you know were kind of crushing you. But yeah, you've basically been doing such important work to rise above. So our next oracle card is Goddess of 10,000 Names. So this is like a mantra card for me. So yeah, people have really been doing a lot of work to um, find sort of a meditation practice that works or even just like little affirmations to say to yourself through the day to keep you in your power. But yeah, you have really um, been presented with what you knew you were not mastering. We have Ash, Mastery, Reversed. Uh, alongside the Ace of Cups reversed. So you've come through a really important outpouring as well, where you used your voice in a powerful way. And that managed to sort of extinguish the last of, again, what was not working for you. And yeah, that brings us to now, with Saturn Direct in Capricorn. So things will get probably more um, difficult and pressuresome, but you have the tools you need to surmount this last leg of the Saturn and Capricorn journey, which brings us to the main reading. Yay. <laughs> so we start with let it go, Quan Yin. So you're in this beautiful place, place of self-compassion, which is helping you continue to release your remaining obstacles and prepare you for this beautiful humanitarian energy that is about to rush in and quite literally change the entire world. Whoa. And so our next main oracle card is Cartouche. So we have two um, cards that are about speaking um, affirmations, uh, speaking forth your spirituality, speaking forth your story in order to both inspire others and continue to inspire you to stay on track with what you have learned um, really works for you and is helping you blossom and let go of what no longer serves. And so our final main oracle card is sweet orange zest. So you are really about to tap into your passion and what you feel makes life sweet in a much more tangible way. Yay, picture a big juicy orange. You are ready to peel the skin off that and take a real bite out of the life that you want for yourself. Yay. So what will be the main theme of Saturn direct in Capricorn? And it's the Nine of Cups reversed. So the keyword on the top deck is happiness. So happiness reversed. We're pointing back at Eight of Cups energy. And so, yes, yeah, this will really be a time of continuing to have to let go of the things you have sort of still been trying to ignore um, that are not working for you. But again, this is pointing back at the energy of the Eight of Cups, which is the card of vocational calling. So if you haven't already realized what your passion, what your purpose 
uh, what your calling is, this is going to be an important time to listen to what's coming through. And yeah, the realizations you're having about quite literally where you want to be with a capital B. <laughs> So what will be the main challenge of Saturn's last leg in Capricorn? And it's the sun reversed. So yeah, you've been probably experiencing pr some pretty miraculous relationship healing. The Ace of Cups reversed as the shadow card points back at Ten of Cups energy. So you have really touched on what ultimate joy really feels like for you. And so your main challenge will be realizing it's not going to be sunny every day. <laughs> there will still be uh, depression. There will still be anxiety. And those things will rear their heads. But you can really know that you have um, accessed the tools that you know help you move through those times of darkness. Beautiful. Good job, everybody. And so, <laughs> uh, what major challenge are you ready to overcome? And we have the Eight of Wands, Swiftness. This is one of my favorite cards, and the Toth one is particularly lovely. But this is the card of, yeah, sudden changes. Amazing, almost miraculous shifts that could only have happened um, as a result of the energetic work you've been doing. And so, yeah, you are really finding your voice. We've got Mercury and Sagittarius here. So you're ready to um, take aim with the ideas you have for this passion, vocational calling sort of energy. And you're ready to, to shoot your arrow. And you can know that you really will be making your mark. So, oh, I love that we have rainbows um, to reflect that Ten of Cups energy, bringing us to the reading too. Amazing. So what's your best advice for weathering the last of Saturn and Capricorn? And we have the Princess of Swords with the Queen of Wands. So the Princess of Swords is like student energy, ready to like tickle your brain in kind of a new way. But that's, again, the direct result of realizing what your true passion is and the ways that you want to be nurturing that. So you're ready to learn a lot more, again, about what, who, and where you want to be. And yeah, sort of get back to that sense of, of mastery and of being in control of the ways you want to be making use of your personal energy in the world. Wow. So I got a really strong mother-daughter vibe from the Queen of Wands and Princess of Swords here. So that what relationship healing that I mentioned earlier doesn't have to mean romantic relationships. Um, it could be a lot of parent-child relationships are softening in a really important way. Because yeah, we're coming up on... After Saturn um, finishes in Capricorn, a few days later is the Saturn-Jupiter conjunction, which is going to be a big sort of worldwide rocking of the proverbial boat. So this is really the time to realize, yeah, who you want to have in your life. That's been a question all year, all summer. But yeah, really decide, like, imagine if you were like Noah preparing the ark, who are you bringing on your ship? And there has been some really important uh, healing surrounding your perspective on that. Wow. And so that brings us to the higher self cards. Wowie. We start with father, husband, brother, son, Osiris, which is fascinating next to the card from the Isis Oracle, which is the brother in darkness, overcoming negative energy with feminine power. So Osiris is actually Isis's counterpart. Um, who he got like dismembered and scattered across the earth, but she went and found all these pieces and resurrected him with her magical power. So the entire world's perspective on masculinity and what that means is also about to receive a giant shake. And literally our men, the men we care about, uh, are going to need a lot of support uh, especially if they have not been particularly engaging in the sort of spiritual um, pursuits that you have been. But and again, though, the, the masculine in general is poised for some really intense healing and merging with the feminine. So that can feel very exciting. It can feel uh, daunting because, yeah, you're about to have to use your energy in a much bigger way. So that's why all these affirmations and practices that you've been establishing are going to be so important to maintain. But again, uh, Suji, sacredness, really affirms that you have become so strong. And yeah, you're really ready to uh, deliver everybody you care about into the future with you. Wow. So our final higher self card is the Princess of Wands. Yay! So here's the Queen of Wands' other daughter. <laughs> 
But yeah, you are ready to learn a whole lot more about your passion, what it can do for you. And you're really ready to just sort of ride your newfound energy, the energy you've been gaining from all these spiritual practices, because you're vibration has been just expanding and fluctuating and you're about to really enter just a totally new phase of the way you're sharing that with the world so she's got a big tiger here and i love that her headdress looks like the aries symbol so i think we can really look forward to the spring the astrological new year which begins with aries season which starts uh march 20th um that's going to really be a time where it feels like actually the sun comes up again in some important way but yeah we are all poised for a super reinvigoration of our relationships um, of our sense of being powerful and of our realization of the direction we want our energy to be being applied wow so <laughs> yeah um, let me look at my notes yeah we're learning more we're developing our passions in bigger ways than ever um, yeah, so much relationship healing. There's such an emphasis on family here. So again, really think about who you want in your life. <laughs> and Saturn in Capricorn is going to really help you um, let go of who you don't and um, strengthen your relationships with who you do. Mm -hmm. And so there were no pentacles cards. So stay focused on grounding. Do not drop your practices. Uh, in fact, enhance them <laughs> add more if you're feeling it um, but keep doing what you're doing because it really is working for you and yeah the gap numbers in the reading add up to nine so that's the energy of healing so everything that you want to be healing is because you've been so focused on that happening for yourself and nine is also the number of being almost there so this is the last push we are about to really see the world change a lot like palpably beginning with the winter solstice and so get excited keep climbing and that's it for today <laughs> i hope you enjoyed this reading uh, if you did you can feel free to subscribe you can like the video you can leave a comment if it resonated you can even share if you think other people would benefit uh, if you're interested in a private reading with me you can check out my etsy shop the link will be below as will links to my facebook and instagram where you can follow me for daily readings and tidbits about my own spiritual journey and yeah that's it for now until next time keep your hearts open keep your eyes on the skies I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.